Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today, we are going to be looking at the weekly metagame breakdown for the highest performing win rate decks for the Explorer Best of One format on MTG Arena. We're going to be looking at all the stats from Untapped GG, what you see on the screen, companion tool that aggregates user win rates. You could aggregate your own as well. If you want to get started with Untapped, link is in the video description. But we're going to look at the stats, look at the popularity of decks, and then look at what's doing well on the ladder, uh, and kind of go from there. So. Uh, before we jump in, I'm really curious from folks kind of getting a feel for how you are enjoying the format post the bands. Are you liking it more? Do you wish they were heavier on the bands? Maybe something from Phoenix, for example. Uh, what are your thoughts on the format? Let me know in the YouTube comments. So in terms of popularity of the day, Mono Red Wizards is the most popular deck at 12%. We've seen a big uptick in Angels, uh, just kind of counteracting. There's a lot of aggressive decks. Well, Angel gains a lot of life. And four toughness is tough to deal with for some of the angel decks. Mono Green Devotion at 7%, Phoenix at about 7, Zorius Controls, just a shade under 6, Mono Block at 5.5, and, and then Jun Food, like the Jun, uh, the Yigra combo decks are about 5% each. Uh, if we look just in terms of the trends themselves, Mono Red was peaking at the highest 20, kind of came down, and we're seeing kind of the Angels deck mirror uh, that of the Mono Red deck. Um, but let's jump into it, folks. I will timestamp and paste all these deck lists, so don't worry about just quickly scribbling them down. We got you covered in that regard. So we're going to look uh, September 4th through the 11th, 24,000 games played, Platinum to Mythic Rank. Ice win rate deck. Zorius Control, the, the Fairy Gamers Rejoice. So we have kind of our Planeswalker package to Fairies, Wandering Emperors. There's a Alt Art Nar set in here. I remember if it defaults you to the rare one, you can just craft the uncommon. You don't have to use rare wild cards if you're missing this. A uh, big thing is we're seeing temporary lockdown in the main as a four up just to deal with all these creature decks. Uh, and then just one Supreme Verdict, one Sunfall, one Farewell. So kind of splitting it up, respecting aggro a lot more. Uh, early interaction with March, the other early light and get lost, a bunch of cheap counters. Uh, three step ahead, no more lies, Dovin's Veto. Interesting to even see something like Knockout Blow, just respecting the red decks uh, in terms of a main board card. Absorb as another cheap counter. That gains you some life. And then Katsuli's Flanker, Incidental Graveyard Hate. I uh, can hit Phoenix, stuff like that. Side, or your, not, no sideboard and best of one, but uh, Castle, just like both the castles in here, Hall of Storm Giants, Utility Lands, Myrex, Restless Anchorage, and a Sunken Citadel to really kind of take advantage. This is a good example of like a deck that's just built for best of one in mind. Um, just kind of playing the, you know, card that's traditionally sideboard, but if the meta is really dictating there's a lot of mono red, then play a card that's really good against mono red. We then go to Boros Convoke, 75%, kind of unlocked with Amalia and uh, Vampires going away. Nothing super innovative about this list, just kind of a throwback to the original list. Core of the deck is you want Voldaren Epicure, Thraben Inspector, or Novice Inspector on one. Make an artifact, turn two, smash that artifact with Gleeful Demolition, and then you can start convoking out Knight Aaron of Eos or Venerated Loxodon as early as turn two. Resolute Reinforcement provides multiple bodies, Thalia for tax, and then you kind of have your mana sinks and like, or kind of creature sinks. You could pump a bunch into Warden to get a big invoke or just go with your go wide strategy have imidane's recruiter to pump the team and give it haste uh, this version is playing a little bit more in terms of utility lines do not like the castles in this deck i would probably suggest not to play the castles if you want you can play something like cavern of souls to name human there's a lot of humans in the deck uh, you just have so few actual untapped line or like basics or like mountains forest that these will likely come into play i tapped more than anything we then go to Mono Green Devotion, 74%. So this version's a little bit chunkier in terms of the deck. Um, some interesting choices here, but for the deck is Nykthos with Kiora generates huge amounts of mana uh, with all your devotion enablers. So things like Old Growth Troll counts for three devotion. You have Invasion of Ixalan that can help you find the Nykthos. Cheap uh, mana dorks to help you get ahead. Uh, the Leyline of the Guild Pack, this is in your opener. You get it into play for free and then can really power up that Nykthos for huge amounts of mana. Once you start Storm the Festivaling, you can get into play things like Cavalier of Thorns. This one's playing Railway Brawler to make your things bigger. You can generate enough mana that turn. Spew just a whole bunch of big green creatures to the board. 
and then flip Uvenwald Oddity, give it all haste. You also have a one of Ulamog on the top end here, just as a catch-all that can also mill. Moving on, we go Jund Food, Yurga combo. So it's basically Rakdos Sacrifice with a Yurga infinite combo. 69% nice. The cat goes nice. Um, so with this deck here, what you do is your normal sacrifice deck, the combo itself is Yurga and then two cats. So Cauldron Familiar in the graveyard, Cauldron Familiar in play. Uh, there are foods in addition to being creatures. So you can sack the onboard one to get bring back the one from your graveyard and then just keep looping that to drain them out infinitely you also have scavenger's talent here that um can allow you to mill yourself and then its last level can let you sack permanence to bring back uh a creature from your graveyard and then that creature can be yurga so you can kind of self mill into the combo put your cats in the graveyard and then get back your yurga on the top end the rest of the deck sacrifice deck which is oven that we've seen claim the first four nice stealing effects Fables, the Mayhem Devil pings to deal with creatures, Blood Tithe with Fable as removal, and then Deadly Dispute for a card advantage. Moving on, we go to Grease Fang. So there's a few variations that you'll see of this deck. This one's opting to go a little bit chunkier on the mid range. So the core of the deck, put vehicles into your graveyard. Ideally, Parhelion the second. Parhelion the first, not as good. The sequel, great. Um, and then with Grease Fang, you reanimate it. Crew it right away, gets haste, you attack in for 13 damage, get left behind two 4-4s four with Flying Vigilance uh, in terms of Angels. So you self-mill yourself uh, with things like Cash Grab, Witherbloom Command, Rafine's Informant, Grizzly Salvage. Um, notably no Stitcher Supplier in this variant, a little bit more mid-range focused. A lot of hand hate in this one, not a lot in terms of Fatal Push style effects. Sentinel can also give you just another way to kind of Fair game plan. This usually you see a sideboard play, um, but this one being in the main board of the deck itself. One shield would kind of mix in there. Going on, we go to Is It Phoenix? So well, probably the most consistent deck in best of three and best of one. Could at times struggle a little, but uh, against super aggressive decks. But this deck here does have 10 one mana removal spells plus the Brazen Boros Bounce uh, and does have access to like Phoenix that can repeatedly block. The Ledger Shredders can be a brick wall at times, just kind of stonewalling your opponent's attacks. Uh, this also has the Prof's Edetic Memory, just as a way to put counters on things that you're naturally drawing. So it could bring out a big beater that just wasn't expected. The big card of the form or the deck is Treasure Cruise, just refilling your hand for as little as one mana. And then you just have 12 one mana cantrips to kind of pair with it as well. Continuing our journey, we go to Selesnia Angels, so a deck that's kind of come back recently. So the core of this deck, you have Bishop of Wings that can gain you life, um, Luminarch Veteran, this version's also playing Case of the Uneated Beast, uh, reasonable to also get stuff back from the graveyard if there's a lot of sweepers. So what you want to do is try to hit five life gained in a turn, so Res Resplendent Angel gets bigger, or sorry, um, it's that trigger and then makes a 4-4 angel on its own, which can kind of snowball. If you're at 27 or more life, then you get a, an anthem to your team. You have access to Skyclave Apparition as removal. This version is also playing Voice of the Blessed as another non-angel uh, way to kind of get a big creature into play. Collected Company and Kyla's re Reconstruction as ways to cheat things into play. And then Johnny Strength of the Pride is actually the mirror breaker of the deck. Uh, it just allows you to have a way to wipe the board so both decks if you've seen angel mirrors it's like both players are like 200 life uh, this lets you sweep the board in terms of one side and then kind of win that way there uh, the mana base here is a little ambitious i would not play nykthos in this deck uh, i would play the pain lands uh, when i paste this i'll look to paste a better mana base in terms of the deck itself i don't like this mana base um, so I will get you a better mana base there. The whole point of Nykthos is to kind of power up like mono green devotion type things. You're not really going to do it that. Um, I'll either find like a very similar list or um, something with a refined mana base. But the core of the kind of idea is here with the angels list itself. Um, going on, we go to Gruel Aggro. 
Uh, so this deck here is one of the new decks that kind of popped up in Pioneer. We are missing Reckless Bushwhacker in this version, uh, but the kind of the core of this deck is the Burning Tree Emissary deck that's looking to spam and go wide. Uh, things like Aloe Alchemist can be plotted and then give an immediate effect and then be cast after. You have things like Cunning Coyote, which could come into play, give another creature haste. So you can go like Burning Tree Emissary Coyote, give the Burning Tree haste which is really strong just in terms of like turn two, five haste damage out of nowhere. Um, you have things like Breakout that could find stuff. Tarkus Command can uh, deal damage, pump your team as well. And then honestly, even just shutting off life gain could be big against turn against the Angels deck. Uh, you have things like Heartfire Hero, Swiss Sphere in here, Kamanos, Pump Effects, and then some Burn mixed into there as well. Continuing, we go to Mono Black Discard. So we got Waste Knot. Uh, sorry, this one's at 59%. And we got Builder's Talent, or Bandit's Talent, not Builder's Talent. That's a different talent. Uh, so just lots of ways to kind of take advantage of your opponent discarding cards, enabling the discard. So you kind of have the rack effect if they have no cards, and then when they discard stuff, you get the Waste Knot effects. So you're really just trying to attack their hands. You have things like Thoughtseize, Go Blank, um, Liliana in here. The Alkalazots can also attack their hand. The Bandit's Talent itself is enabling. Um, I would just play the full Fatal Push probably uh, in this deck. You have um, Trespassers, Soul Shatter, probably just shift this down. You don't necessarily need the Soul Shatter. It's a little expensive in terms of removal for the format, but honestly, just cut these two Soul Shatters, play the full Fatal Push, you're probably fine. You might want these to be um, go for the throats instead against some of the, like the Prowess style things. Uh, the rate on this is a little, a little low for what I would say. The big card in this deck is Guy Reach Sanitarium. This can force draw discard that would enable these types of effects as well. Uh, this version is opting to go with like a Faceless Haven package. Um, you can play Muta Vault in this slot. You can play Citadel. I am going to get rid of the Faceless Havens probably in this deck because it's not a reasonable inclusion. I would say it's too slow for the format uh, and just play Citadel, which is commonly the card you'll see here. Uh, just because it reduces the cost of your activated abilities of these types of effects. Go to 5 color Quintarius combo, 57%. So if you haven't seen this deck, what it's doing is kind of circumventing the mana rules in a way. So uh, Quintarius, you cast Quintarius, you minus discover, it always finds you a clone effect that copies Quintarius, and then you just keep casting them, and then you stack. So Spark Double becomes multiple copies. The static ability would deal two, gain two each time, and you just kill your opponent from that point there. Um, the Trumpeting Carnosaur can also help you cascade into this combo. You have Leyline Binding as removal. Spinewood Armadillo uh, can help you find lands, gain you some life. Tanuki puts lands into play. Beanstalk Lion Giant puts lands into play. And then Virtue Persistence as early removal. You can also just channel this as early removal. You have the Karuga as a companion that can also draw you a bunch of cards. And lastly, Mono Red Aggro. Um, so we've got kind of two variations. So the Mono Red Aggro deck itself, heavily played, I find it very fragile in this format. Unless you have like the, the god tier hands, it tends to just run out of gas fairly easy. It also is in a weird spot because you have a lot of these spectacle cards that oftentimes will have to be played post-combat, where a lot of your effects want to be played pre-combat to give you the prowess. Um, so you have your slick shots, stuff like that. Uh, compared to this, like I prefer the gru like in Paper Pioneer. I have Gruel Wizards. I have like every version of the Gruel Aggro deck. Uh, but I was like at my RCQ, I played the Gruel Wizards. Just a little bit more proactive with the effects. I find Audacity stuff of that nature. I prefer it. So the deck that's been really picking up popularity instead has been this uh, Rakdos Fling kind of aggro deck. So this one is uh, from Walrus Madness. They went seventy nine and thirty six with this one. Um, but kind of the core of this deck is similar to the standard one, but you have things like Titan Strength, big boost in terms of damage, Monstrous Rage, you have an Ancestral Anger that gives a bonus attack, gives Trample, uh, Heartfire Hero has that kind of fling package, the Ember Heart Challenger, Slick Shots in here, one Reckless Rage is removal, and then Claim uh, Fame, then reanimate any of your small creatures, and then also haste them out later. You'll sometimes see Dreadheart Arcanist in these lists, um, but for the most part, this deck's been very, very popular online in terms of NTGO leagues. 
can also see like the sideboard here, but not really relevant in this case uh, for this deck. Um, so that's it for the week. Let me know what you think, what you've been playing in the format, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.